Okay, so we are gonna start this video right away with a brand that I thrifted once. I found it at a Goodwill and it was so worth it. I've only found it once, but I'm looking and looking and looking to find it again because it was very worth picking up. And that brand is Lynn Chase. Um, so like I said, I, I found, it was a few years back, a couple years back, and I found a set of dinnerware now, generally, I don't sell a ton of dinnerware. I know there's profit to be made to be made with dinnerware, but I have found that just the storage and the shipping on things like flatware and sewing patterns and costume jewelry and clothing is actually so much easier. And um, I try to go easy on my shipping husband. <laughs> and so I tend to only look for the dinnerware brands that are going to get me a really hefty profit and so that's kind of what this video is about today so i do though check that aisle mostly because i'm at the thrift store i check pretty much every aisle um but i you know it's the dinnerware i end up picking up has to meet certain criteria and this lynn chase dinnerware definitely fits that criteria so when I looked at it, I picked it up, I noticed it, it just looked like really, ex it looked expensive and it looked well made and it just kind of had that money look. And so I looked it up and I could not believe the selling prices on Lynn Chase or I think, we'll show, I'll show you the back stamp in a little bit. Um, but the day I picked it up, there was 27 pieces of it. And I think it must have been bundled up together like by piece. And I ended up with 27 pieces. I only paid about $20 for all 27 pieces. And everything sold very fairly quickly. And I made about $1,000 on that dinnerware. Okay, so here are some pieces that I found. I'm gonna pop up some pictures. Um, the pieces I found were, the pattern was called Costa Azura, and it's from the late 1980s. And I found bowls, I found plates, I found a couple coffee mugs. Um, one of them was signed, um, and with, it was kind of like a personalized mug to somebody with Lynn Chase's signature on it. Um, I don't know necessarily that didn't really increase the value, but um, it was just something interesting I hadn't seen before. And so, um, yeah, so I was, hopefully you've seen the pictures that I popped up here and the selling prices that I got for those pieces. Um, now here's a picture of what the back, back stamp on mine looked like. And it was really nice because it just says Chase, but it has the, the pattern name right on there. And then it was like a whole big little paragraph description of the pattern as well. Anyway, let us switch over to the computer and we're gonna take a look at some of their other, her other patterns as well. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to start on replacements.com. Cause sometimes I think if, as you're researching items to sell, it helps to just kind of get an overall view of kind of like the types of things that you should be looking for. And this will kind of give you an overview of the style of Lynn Chase dishes in the first place. So I don't know if you realize, but a replacementslimited.com, um, it defaults when you search a certain artist or certain maker, the default is to most popular. So that's very interesting because, um, you know, that can kind of help train your eye too as you're doing research on flatware or you're doing research on, um, you know, anything else, dinnerware, things like that, that are on replacements. You can kind of get an idea of the patterns people are actually looking for. And so that's, you know, this is based on what people are looking for on replacements.com, not just not Google or anything like that. So as you can see, she has a lot of animal themed dinnerware, and we'll see that in the eBay solds as well. But Jaguar Jungle is looks like it's the top one. Tiger Raj, um, Winter Game Birds, Monkey Business. Parrots of Paradise, so all very kind of exotic animals. Jungle Party, here's the one I sold, Costa Azura. So not too far down on the searched for 
as you, you can see, as I told you from my results on that, I ended up selling it for, you know, made quite a hefty profit on those dishes. Um, Jungle Jubilee, another one. We've got some more uh, animal print type things. So exotic animals, marine life, um, that kind of thing seems to be a very common theme with her. Okay, as you can see, they're very pretty plates. They're very, um, uh, I don't know, I wanted to say they look expensive. <laughs> and that's just my impression of them. I don't know. But so that gives you an idea, something that will jump out at you, you know, to take a look at that looks a little bit different maybe than just other plates that you see. But definitely something with animals or something like that you want to take a second look at. So that can help train your eye. Now let's look over on eBay. So I just typed in Lynn Chase. It took me to pottery, glass, decorative cookware, dinner, and serveware. So let's just stay there for now. Um, so as you can see, these are the ones that are listed. And we have 837 results in this category for Lynn Chase. Um, if you look up the up at the top along here, related searches, these are going to be popular searches on eBay. And you can see some of those names that we saw over on replacements. Okay. Anyway, I what I thought was interesting, 837 results. So if we look at what sold in the last 90 days, if we switch it over to sold over here. We only have about 300 results. So that's not the greatest sell through rate. Um, I would still, it, it just means it might not sell quickly. So it just depends on um, a couple different factors, but I would definitely, if I saw the, the name Chase or Lynn Chase again, I would definitely be double checking, looking things up and, and seeing, you know, what I think I could get for it. Um, Anyway, you can see some of these prices, the replacements themselves, it sells on eBay. I don't know if you guys knew that. But we have like bowls, plates, some of the prices, 250 for this one dinner plate with free shipping. The other factor to consider is that it's summertime and dinnerware, uh, I have found certain certain categories slow down a little bit in the summer as people are more focused on their dining out of doors um, or their camping and their picnicking and, and things like that. As we get into the fall and people start um, hosting other people, maybe for holidays or for different things like that, they start to pay a little bit more attention to whether they have enough plates, if they have enough um, forks, whatever, for the company that they're planning. Okay, so we see some of the pr selling prices on this brand, Lynn Chase. And so that is going to be our first one, first of the five that we're going to talk about today of dinnerware, you know, something you'd find in the kitchen aisles at the thrift store. So let's move on to number two. Okay, so brand number two that we're going to talk about today is Heath Ceramics. So the artist was Edith Heath, who started the, who opened Heath Ceramics, and that was back in 1948. So we're going vintage with this one, although the company is still open today, and they are found in Sausalito, um, California. So Heath Pottery falls into, or Heath Ceramics falls into the, you know, California pottery category, which is very collectible. Um, I want to say it's been a while since I have found any Heath. Um, I was thinking that at first, but then I realized that I did find a little ashtray about a year ago at a yard sale here in Montana and um, sold that. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, but anyway, it was a few years back, maybe when I was living more in when I was living in Washington, maybe because it was the California pottery, it was very popular with people into mid-century. And so um, maybe that is why I found it a little bit more often back in the day. But I'm always on the lookout 
for it. And there's a few things that I look for um, just as I'm scanning through dinnerware that I'll share with you in a minute. Okay, so like I said, she opened Heath Ceramics in 1948. Um, it's still going. The pieces that I've had have had a couple different marks on them. One is incised, and then I've also had pieces where the mark is stamped. Um, let's take a look at my Etsy solds. I did sell some pieces on eBay in the past, but those pictures are a little bit harder to get. And we can go pretty quickly and look at my Etsy solds, and I can, I can explain a little bit better. So let's switch over to the computer and do that. Okay, so here we are on our page of, this is, I have this in my Etsy shop. Um, this was my, it's now my Etsy, it's my flatware shop, but in the past I sold a bunch of different vintage on it. And I would, you know, I'm gonna show you some prices on it, but I honestly think prices maybe have gone up a little bit since, and I was kind of in my early stages of vintage selling when I sold some of these. So I, um, Let's see, I put most of my Heath here on Etsy. Like I said, I did sell some things years ago, like like 2011 or 13 or something like that. One of my best scores of Heath ceramics was a, from the free pile at an estate sale. And so that was just, that was just awesome. Um, I'll try to pop up a picture of what I found right here. Anyway, um, so these are some of the ones I found a little bit later on. Most of these were found just on the shelves at Goodwill. Now this is that little ashtray that I was talk, talking about. Now personally, I don't, I don't generally sell ashtrays. Um, a lot of times those, though, pieces of Heath are gonna go to a collector, you know, who are gonna go, they're gonna go to people who just want all the different pieces. Uh, I mean, maybe they are using them as ashtrays, I'm not sure, but anyway. I saw that it was like a dollar at a yard sale and um, it sold for $40. Now, each of the, the outside of the pieces are pretty much like a matte finish glaze. And then the inside is a little bit glossy and all the different colors have different names. And so if you can track down the color and the name, then, um, I think it'll sell a lot better because people are trying to match up. It's not always possible. I, I was looking through some notes and like this little creamer, um, I found it with some other pieces and I had to write to Heath Ceramics. So I ended up writing to them and they gave me a couple names or of glazes that it was possible that it could be. And they said it was no longer in production and that it was sought after because it was only made for restaurants and so it's just like a mini individual creamer so I sold that one for $49 um, and that was back in 2012 so I probably definitely would go a little higher now one thing I want to point out here let me get this opened up so this is like I'm editing so it's going to be kind of a weird view of it but Hmm. Let me see if I can get it up higher above the little thing so you can see. Anyway, there's there's a very distinctive handle, and this is how I've spotted Heath a few times at thrift stores is just seeing that handle. But a lot of times it's the matte finish. You know, this one has a nice colored glaze, like a turquoise glaze inside. This is just beautiful. Um, so anyway, I I, you know, that little handle is kind of your tell. I found it a few times. So let me see if I can get a good picture. This might be hard to see, but the signature, it's on its side, but you can see it says H-E-A-T-H. -H. The T drops down and then it's like a little pot or a little bowl or something like that in the T. And then there's like a registered mark. So that's like an incised mark. Some, like I said, some of my other pieces have had that mark printed. So let's go back. Oh, I have it nice and big now. I should do this all the time. Okay, um, you know, here's the other one. It was a blue inside with a white. So there are gonna be different colors to these pieces. I'm thinking, 
Maybe these were the ones that were printed. I think so. Yeah, so see the the mark is just printed on the back. I'm not positive which I'm thinking the incised ones are older and then that's a newer mark. I am not positive on that at all. Like I said, they're still in business, so I'm not sure um, what their current mark or anything like that looks like. I didn't I didn't do that research that far. I would just buy it. If it was said Heath, I would just buy it. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, that was my best, one of my best scores was free at an estate sale, and I was super excited to find that one. So definitely on the lookout for Lynn Chase, and I'm on the lookout for... Edith Heath and okay, so I have a funny story about Edith Heath and I, I realized it because I used to have a blog. Uh, my blog was the Recyclista and I was tell it was kind of like the like this YouTube channel. I would tell my thrifting stories and anyway, the blog is long gone, but I do have in my email some copies of my old posts and I was reading through a post about finding Heath, Edith Heath at a at a thrift store and I was thrifting with my husband and in the description I said we're looking at like Starbucks mugs and and things like that and now the Starbucks mugs were all like overpriced and you know total like what they what they do Washington overprices their their Starbucks mugs even though they're a dime a dozen out there but anyway so all of a sudden, I, I guess I spotted those handles, right? Because the mugs were all hanging on the mug racks. And I was like, Heath, 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 Heath. And my husband is like, what? He's like, you sound like you're doing Lamaze. Anyway, that was my funny story about Edith Heath. Okay, so brand number three that we want to be on the lookout for while we were while we're in the dinnerware, kitchenware aisle of the thrift store is Mackenzie Childs. So we've talked about this before on the channel because Mackenzie Childs stuff kind of goes through, I think we talked about it in picture frames and it can cut, you know, there's probably coffee mugs, you know, different things like that. But it's basically a bolo brand no matter where you find it. Um, the, the sales that I have had I have not found a ton of Mackenzie Childs, but I have found a little bit. I have found one drinking glass. I'm gonna pop up a picture right here. And I sold, it was just a small little tumbler rocks glass and it sold for $50. Um, and then I did find a little um, hanging plaque kind of thing, ornament. It wasn't Christmas themed or anything like that. Um, maybe that's what it's used for, I don't know. But it, you know, just on a little ribbon. And I sold that over on Ruby Lane for $85. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so I am definitely still always looking for Mackenzie Child's items in the thrift store. It's very colorful, as you'll see in a minute. And so there's sometimes I would think they would be a little bit hard to miss. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we should be looking for. Okay, so I thought we would start with replacements.com again because I just love that feature that you can see the most popular. Now, one thing that jumps out right away is this checkerboard pattern, and it's called Courtly Check, and it is something to keep an, keep an eye out for, especially, you know, well, for Mackenzie Childs, it's kind of synonymous. This Courtly Check is just very popular. Now, the little plaque that I, or the little hanging ornament thing that I sold was McLaughlin, and it did have a little bit of that checkerboard on it. Um, it also had, let's see, let's take a look going down. As you can see, they're very colorful. They almost look hand-painted. I mean, they could be hand-painted for all I know. Um, Anyway, more checkerboard, but in different colors, lots of swirly pastels, things like that. And as you can see, you know, some, some pieces are figural. This one has Piccadilly has like rooster heads as handles. So it can be in a teapot. What I noticed up at the top, courtly check enamelware. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. There's ceramics and then there's enamelware as well. 
Um, anyway, so just to give you an idea of some of the colors and the styles that you want to be on the lookout for, for Mackenzie Child. And if we go ahead and click, you know, this is going to be replacements.com pricing, but just to give you an idea, a heart-shaped plate, 139 and the rest are not in stock, all right? So it's their most popular pattern and people are buying it. So they just don't have any. So let's go over to eBay. Now the sell-through rate for Mackenzie Childs is really good. When I did a search, again, I'm searching in kitchen, dinnerware, and serveware. Um, it also comes up in decorative, like in home and garden, um, it also comes up in under pottery and glass, decorative cookware and things like that. So there's more places that, you know, you can search eBay for, but I just wanted to show you some of these, um, things that were listed. So for this one, there's 630 items listed right now for Mackenzie Childs under, um, dinner, dinnerware. And if we go over to, see that checkerboard is everywhere, go over to solds, and the solds are at 465, so that's pretty good. Um, not quite 100%, but it might have been, let's see, I know one of them had a hundred, oh, I forgot to mention, so the Edith Heath, the number two one that we were talking about, that sell-through rate was over 100%. In other words, the, the number of solds was greater than the number of items listed. So in those 90 days, um, the same amount had sold as are currently available. It's not a super scientific sell-through rate. Um, but it's kind of a, a rule of thumb that resellers use in order to determine how fast something is going to sell and how popular it is. Um, let's see. So here are some selling prices. I'm, I'm not, this is sorted just by ended recently. So you can kind of hear some enamel ones. You can kind of see the ones and some of the prices that they've sold for. A lot of offers are accepted. There's one of the teapots. It's a child-sized tea kettle for $60. But we see a lot of that. Okay, four of the plates got bid up to $130. And another hint is that there's also a McKenzie, there's, you know, there's a group for everything on Facebook. So I recently found some um, pulls. They are ceramic um I don't know, ceramic poles that you would put like on a fan or an overhead light. And there was no real place for a signature on them. And they kind of had that Mackenzie Childs look. So I, I think I reached out to them to see if that was something that was, um, belonged to Mackenzie Childs and it turned out it didn't. So I think the brand was Gans. Like somebody found a trinket box that looked very similar to one of the polls that I had and so, and it was by Gans. And so, you know, be careful. There are other companies that will do this brightly colored checkerboard, you know, cause it's popular. Um, but there are fan groups, you know, on Facebook and they know their stuff and their whole house, kitchens, whatever are decorated in this very colorful style. So that is one that I wanted to let you know about. And that is our number three brand to look for at thrift stores. So let's go on to number four. Now, number four is one that is totally new to me um, recently, and I have not found it. So let's find out what that is. Okay, so this is number four. Now, this is something I learned about on Instagram. I have not found it myself but I am on the lookout for it now, and I think it could easily be overlooked, certain parts of it. The brand I'm talking about is Nora Fleming. Now, this isn't gonna be dinnerware per se, but it could be considered serveware or cookware. Um, in any case, it's going to be in that same section of the thrift store. So the, the deal with Nora Fleming, you guys might be familiar with it. I had never heard of it before. 
um, but it's basically either melamine or stoneware serving pieces and they have um, a little hole and you can change out like a charm or they call them minis I think and you can you can change it out depending on the season the holiday the theme um, and so that's the appeal of these things that you can have one kind of serveware change the theme up depending on the time of year that you're using it um, so let's take a look real quick at what what those pieces are going to look like we're going to start off by looking at the Nora Fleming website and then we'll move over to eBay so here we are at the Nora Fleming website so this will kind of give you an idea of what I am talking about you can see this little tray down here um, and the little charm on it so let's look at first of all some of the trays Okay, so they're just plain white, and that's why I feel like things like this could get overlooked at the thrift store, is how many white serving dishes do we see, you know, at any time at the thrift store. So if you look at them all, though, what you're going to be looking for, as soon as I scroll onto it, it shows. Um, if you can look on the, like, look at this little um, utensil holder or whatever it it's this container it's got a little hole in the side and if you look at all these pieces they might be hard to see because it's white on white but in the corner or something they have a little hole okay and so what you do so here's a good picture of what what it looks like so there's this bread tray and then there's a little teapot so this looks like a collaboration with fiesta where um, so like a like Fiesta made the plate, but then you can put this little teapot uh, decoration into the tray. Okay. Now look at the minis. Hello. Am I freezing? Ay, ay, ay. Nope. Here we go. Okay. So they also have first of all, I just want to say they also have some white pieces that are melamine. So like a plastic, so keep that in mind. That's a different section of the thrift store, at least for me. Um, wood boards are also a possibility. They have this like little insert area where the circle, um, you know, the little hole is, okay? Then if we go over to the minis, you can see all the different types. Here, let me scroll over here so you can see it. All the different themes we have these boots we have a campfire a pumpkin pie a gnome a ginger jar it's endless so it's kind of fun i mean i can kind of see the appeal on this so the thing is they're not too expensive when they're new but the dealio is when these things get retired they jump in price so that is really interesting now what i learned i think from looking on ebay is that there might not be a signature on these little um, charms or these little minis. I think they originally had like a sticker. So, you, the, you know, you might see these weird figural like little things at a thrift store. You know, the thrift store might not know what they're, what they are, what they're for. So just kind of maybe in the bag wall, kind of keep your eye open in the bag wall. That's a good idea. I didn't think of that until just now when I was talking. But let's pop over to eBay and we'll talk uh, what kind of prices we're talking here. So we've got 2100 results, Nora Fleming, all categories. Um, and I'm that's this is just what's available that people are offering. So you can see people have there's containers in order to hold your minis. Um, a red solo cup, okay different things like that. Then let's look at solds. You can kind of get an idea of what it looks like a little bit better in some of these pictures. But a rare retired Holly Christmas mini sold for $150. A dragonfly sold for $60. A butterfly sold for $60. Okay, are you getting the idea? The, the, the retired you know, if you find these little minis, 
if they're retired, that can be a really good thing. Or I suppose you could just hang on to them. And if this little, um, you know, hopefully it's not like a Ray Dunn thing where it peaks and then crashes, but you never know. It might be. Um, but so here's a cracker tray that's retired, sold for $39. Beach ball sold for $215. Okay, $250 for a cupcake. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Like, and then, then, so what I've seen on um, Instagrams from some other sellers is that they were finding the platters and the white, you know, the white trays and different pieces like that. And yeah, they're a little bit trickier to ship than obviously the little charms. But definitely can still be worth it, right? Um, so yeah, I just, you can see the lower prices, $12 or so, that's going to be, um, you know, probably ones that are not necessarily retired or maybe just recently retired. I don't know. A soap dish. Okay, let's see. So they did... Uh, Somebody is selling a display. It says Nora Fleming compa compatible. So that could just be something that somebody made. Okay, a little container, $40. Let's see, $162. This includes all of it. So a lot of the charms are actually, you know, if they're retired, those are good prices. Sometimes people sell a whole collection all together. This limited edition retired oval platter sold for 140 and that got bid up. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to give you an idea of maybe a brand. Let me know in the comments down below if you have ever heard of Nora Fleming and if you've ever found any at the thrift store. And I congratulations if you did. Okay, one more to go. Let's finish this up. Okay, so number five, the last brand that we're going to talk about today is Ken Edwards. Ken Edwards Pottery, Mexican Pottery, specifically the Mexican Pottery by Ken Edwards. So if, again, if you're new, if you're new to my channel, if you're not new to my channel, um, I have talked about this before because you've, if you've seen my What Sold videos then in the last few months, you've seen some of the pieces that I have sold by Ken Edwards. Um, and I also did early on in my recent YouTube career, because I did do YouTube back in 2020, but it didn't last. And so back last fall, one of my first videos that I did was all about Ken Edwards pottery. Now, I can't promise how interesting that is. I haven't watched it again <laughs> recently, um, but it was interesting, the history and everything like that. And it was prompted because I had a nice Ken Edwards Hall at the thrift store. And I think if I have the video of that, I will put that right up here. Um, so Ken Edwards Pottery is generally signed K-E for Ken Edwards. And then there will be another little signature on it too, like a fish or a bug or anything or something like that. And that little signature represents the artist that works for um, Ken Edwards in the shop, in the studio, okay? So back when um, I came across a big, you've probably already seen it because I probably already put it up here, but anyway, I came across some dinner plates, a bowl and salad plates. I'm looking at, when I was watching the video, I saw the price tags on like the big plates were $4, smaller plates were $2, it's possible that's what I paid. Um, I do shop that thrift store often on the day where kitchen, like certain day kitchenware is half off. So that possibly happened, but even if it didn't, it was okay. $4 each was fine because my dinner plates sold like one dinner plate, or I should say a couple of my dinner plates sold for about $50 each. I had one that had an owl on it that sold for $60 and then like one was like $35. I've sold a little bowl and then I also had found a couple salad plates, which I sold one, but I am down. This is all I have left of that haul is this little um, 
these two little, uh, they're either salad plates or they're bread and butter. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I can show you the mark right now because I have it in front of me. So we've got KE, we've got Mexico and a little bug butterfly type thing. So that is a mark you're gonna wanna look for. Now what I've determined as I was researching and pricing my pieces, the more that the, the plate is filled, then the higher the prices are gonna be. Because there are, you know, there's some versions that just have, you know, a, like a bird over here and that's it. Um, they'll still sell, but the more busy and involved the pattern is, the higher the prices you're gonna get. So let's just pop over to eBay real quick and see what we can learn over there. Okay, so I'm just decided to show you the um, Ken Edwards Pottery website right here. And you can read about the history and all this stuff. And so we've got traditional, the pieces I found fell into this traditional stoneware. Um, there's a collection series as well, it has a more ornate border. And um, it's lead free, it's microwave safe, freezer safe, oven safe. That I don't know if that definitely applies to the vintage or just the current pieces, but anyway, very interesting information if you wanted to take a look through there. Okay, anyway, so there is still ways to buy this pottery now, okay. But thrift stores are the best way that I found <laughs> to find it. So we're going over to eBay. Again, I just typed in Ken Edwards. It kind of popped me into collectibles and Mexican pottery, which is fine. There's 550 results for Ken Edwards um, in the solds. And so here you can see the... Um, the one I was talking about where there's not as much going on in the, like, in the design. And you're, you're going to find Ken Edwards pottery is going to be all sorts of different things. There's going to be vases. There's going to be candlesticks. There's going to be salt and peppers, things like that. So there's a bowl. There's a little salad plate. Um, a trivet for 19 Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. Look how busy, look how filled. And this was that um, collection. I forgot what it's what it was called, but that one um, series on, let's see, not tradition, but collection series. Okay, so it has that ornate border, but it's got a peacock, it's got a butterfly. Anyway, very ornate, very different. $95 that that got bid up to. Now, some people aren't necessarily using these for eating. They might be using them for hanging on their wall. Um, this Mexican pottery can do very well with the current kind of boho, jungle kind of look that people are into. There's an oil and vinegar. That's kind of cool. Little octopus. Stinking cute. $285 for that. Ooh. Okay, just a saucer. So I sold most of this dinnerware this time on eBay. I have sold it just fine on Etsy in the past as well. So $46.99 for that. That one's got a deer. There was a deer the day that I um, found had that haul. I was so excited. I was like, oh, that one's so pretty, but it was chipped up big time, so I had to leave it. But I did get, like I said, $60 for one dinner plate for one that had an owl on it. So yeah, look for those little different kinds of um, animals. You know, they do a lot of just plain birds or whatever. Another one I had sold for 50, I think had a bird, but it also had this nice big tree on it as well. And look at that, a belt buckle. I had no idea. I've never seen a belt buckle before. Okay, $30, and that is just an eight inch plate. Okay. Anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of Ken Edwards, Mexican pottery that you wanna look for. Mexican pottery is a whole subject on its own. Um, Ken Edwards is definitely not the only artist or whatever that you, you could be on the lookout for, but um, 
definitely something you might come across at yard sales or estate sales or thrift stores. Anyway, um, that is what we wanted to see or learn about Ken Edwards. So there you have it. Those are five brands that I wanted to share with you today that you can be on the lookout for at thrift stores and yard sales and estate sales and check those that dinnerware, check the kitchenware. And um, anyway, leave me a comment below. Have you sold any of these brands? I know I mentioned that with the Nora Fleming. Like I wanted to know if any one of you have ever heard of it. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not into kitchen fads and so <laughs> I've never even heard of it before. But anyway, there are so many other brands of dinnerware, um, kitchenware that definitely can make you money. Like I said at the beginning, I just try to limit the breakables. I buy enough of it as it is, and my darling husband is so good about packaging up whatever I, I feel like selling, um, but I try to go easy on him and not go crazy with it. Now there's brands like Arabia Finland and Denby and Dansk. And what I found with those is that you just have to be kind of selective with the patterns. Some patterns are awesome and some patterns are just kind of so-so and are going to take forever. So I am going to leave you now. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, please go ahead, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you're new here. And we talk about reselling, we talk about bolos, we talk, we do research on what sells and I share the things that I'm selling as well. I'm gonna leave you with links to a couple videos and one is that Ken Edwards one. It has the little thumbnail, doesn't look like my other thumbnails. My son made it for me back in the day, it's super cute. And then we'll also, I'll leave you with an, a video about utensils. And while you're in the kitchen aisle, you might as well look at those too. Have a great one.